Okay, I wanted to do a video on uh, <clears throat> the firing system that I use um, and that I built just to kind of show some of the options that you can do when you, if you chose to build your own system. And, uh, you know, and, and you may see some things here that you may like. And if you don't want to build a system, this may just be something to kind of look for when you buy a system. Nice features. Okay, like I said, this is a home built system. Um, it doesn't have to be in the, uh, the fancy case. It doesn't have to have the fancy panel or anything like that that I've got on this one. The, the first time I built, when I initially built this system, I built it and I made it, I put it just in a wooden box that I built. And the slats were made out of wood too. It looked pretty ghetto, but it worked awesome and it still does. Now I just kind of upgraded it to put it in a, uh, <clears throat> I sent it, I sent my system that I built to a guy and uh, he made my panel for me and he custom makes panels and uh, he ended up putting the guts of my system into this panel for me. Um, I did not design this, I didn't come up with this idea on my own. This is something that a gentleman on the internet, um, he's designed several systems and this is one of them that he came up with and one that I really like so this is the one that I built. Um, I'll just kind of run through it kind of quickly and uh, tell you a few of the features of it. Um, first of all you've got a uh, a key up here up the top. Um, this is going to be your on off key. This is not an arm key, it's just an on and off key, which is something kind of handy to have. Um, you know, when you, you know, on, the, on your shoot day, you got everything wired up, everything's out in the field ready to go. Hopefully, you've got everything wired up and ready to go uh, with a little bit of time to spare. Um, it's nice to be able to, uh, you know, pull the key out and not have to worry about somebody coming up you know they, I guess they shouldn't be out in the field anyway but you know it happens somebody comes up they trip over something they they push a button or they maliciously you know turn your system on start pushing buttons whatever them not having the key is going to disable them from being able to do anything like that um, this system has got three sets of letters with switches okay each set of letters um, represents to me a station a left station a right station and a center station you don't have to use it that way that's just the way that I choose to use it because it's like it's the way I like to do my shows so here I have a left station a center station and a right station um, for each letter that you see here you see a b c d e f g h i j k l for each letter you have 10 Q's so this is a 120 Q system okay there are six slats total each slat containing 20 cues. Okay, so I have six cables going out of my system and out 100 foot into the field um, to my slat. Okay, um, <clears throat> something that I like about the system, one of my favorite features of it, is the the continuity testing is great on it. Um, instead of testing one cue at a time, you can test three cues at a time. Um, you can also shoot multiple cues at once very very easily uh, I have this system to where it, it will shoot I'm sorry it runs off of 24 volts I can run it off of 12 or 24 volts okay running 24 volts just kinda enables you you know I have cables going 100 foot out uh, it just kinda enables you to be able to pop more cues it gives you more power you have less to worry about as far as if you want to pop you know six matches on a front or something like that you, you don't have to worry about it not being able to do it because it's going to be able to do it uh, shooting 24 volts. Um, and like I said, you can pop multiple cues at the same time with it with no problem. Um, th the way I set it up is I shoot my shows on uh, three separate fronts. Um, I have a left station, and then 50 foot from the left station is the center station, and then 50 foot from the center station is the right station. Um, I can turn all three stations on or off however I want to do it. So say I want to start my opener. My opener, I normally start them just from the center station. So for my opener, I've got it set to E. Um, I would arm only the center station by flipping the switch down to the arm mode. I would arm only the center station. And say I shoot my first five cues are going to be my opener. So I make it through my first five cues. The crowd sees only the center station. Maybe they think, you know, we're only shooting from one station, whatever. After I get through my opener, now I can go back and I can arm 
the left station and the right station, go back, hit Q number one, and when I hit Q number one, it's going to fire A1 and I1. So now we're shooting just from the two outside stations. So after they kind of become accustomed to only seeing something from the center station, now we're shooting from two outside stations. Okay. Then, say we get through Q5, because we've already used up Qs E1 through 5, say we get through A and I1 through 5 in the beginning body of the show, now, if I hit 6 and all three stations are still in R mode, if I hit 6, it's going to shoot A6, E6, and I6. So now we're going to shoot from all three stations basically at the same time. So it's a, it's a nice little feature of the system. Um, then on each of these rotary switches, I can switch them however I want to shoot off of whatever uh, particular row of cues that I want them to shoot off of. Um, so as I go through the show, you know, I have to switch which uh, row of cues that I'm on. Um, I did have uh, the gentleman that, that built my, he didn't, the gentleman that put the guts of my system into this, I had him add LEDs to here. Um, two reasons. Now when the system's in arm mode, I can see it because these lights light up whatever station I'm on. And it, it shows me whatever letter I'm on is lit up, okay? Um, Another feature that I like about this system is the continuity testing. Continuity testing means when you've got your show all set up in the field, uh, you're ready to go, you want to test and make sure that every single cue that you have it hooked up properly and you don't have, say, a bad E-match or a bad igniter. If you have a bad igniter and you go to test continuity, what, what it does is it sends like a, a really small signal out to your cue and if you've got continuity, it's going to loop right around and come right back to your system and tell you, and it's going to give you a light and tell you that you have good continuity. Okay? If you have a bad E match or a bad igniter, it's not it's not going to give you a light when you push the button. That way, you know you can send somebody out and say, "Go check Q G9, find out what's wrong with it. You know, rehook it up, switch the matches out, whatever you got to do." And then that prevents you in the middle of the show you can't figure out why Q you know G9 isn't firing now you've already tested it you you know that ahead of time that it was a good match whatever as far as the continuity testing goes something I like about it you can test three cues at once okay if you flip the testing mode basically works the same as the arm mode where you can flip them all on or off okay so if you flip all three stations to the test mode and you have all three of these on A1, E1, I1 when you push number one it's going to do a continuity test on A1, E1, and I1. So you can test three cues at once. So if I have continuity on A1, E1, and I1, and I push number one, all three of these lights are going to light up. If I push number one and I only have continuity on, and I have a bad cue on I1, these two are going to light up because I got good continuity on them. This one is not. So now instantly I know I got to send somebody out or I got to run out and check and find out what's the matter with that cue. As you go, it's real easy to do and it's fast. You look at your cue sheet or whatever you have your cues written down on and you go through and, and you just go through and hit the buttons. You know, you just go through as you hit five, you should have three lights there. You hit six, you may only have two lights there. Then you just check your cue sheet and you say, okay, wait a minute, I'm not shooting anything. I don't have anything hooked up on the center station for cue number six. So it's correct that I only have two on the outside. You know what I mean? And then you just keep going through it. Once you hit number 10, then you switch to B, F, and J. And then you go through and keep testing it just like that. And the testing flies by, you know, with, with, with a nice feature like that. It makes testing real easily uh, done. You know, it doesn't take very long to do it all, and it's nice. Um, kind of just for the slats, I mentioned the slats a couple times. I'll show you them. Um, here, I put my slats in these uh, little seahorse cases. Um, you know, you don't need to. It, it just, I just kind of like the way it looks, so I did it. It makes it look cleaner, and it protects your slats. It protects your equipment a little better. Um, here you can see that this is the slat for cues E6 through, uh, well, E6 through E10, all the way up to H6 through H10. So, like I said, this is a 120 cue system. I've got six slats, each with 20 cues each. Um, and then right here is uh, where you plug your cable in. This is where the cable goes from from 
right here on the system into here on the slat. So this is E6, so I'm gonna go right here is where the DB9 goes from uh, E through H, six through 10. It goes from there to the slat, E through H, six through 10. So that's something, uh, you know, just that's kind of nice with the system. Is that they're all already numbered and lettered and, and you know what's going on with them. So we'll uh, do some continuity testing. I'll show you just kind of an example of some continuity testing, some other stuff you can do. And then I'll go into my external battery, uh, my external power source on the next video.